got to talk Burhalter. We got to talk the curious case of Greg Burhalter. Not really sure what to do with him. Some of the USA fans. Uh, I guess quickly let's go around and everyone give their quick two cents. I guess do you think he is somebody we should stick with or somebody we should let loose and maybe try other things? I mean, I guess I I would say we we keep him for the sake of how he performed and in the camarader- camaraderie that this team had shown together under him. Um, obviously, there's headlines circling right now that we'll get into shortly that might lead to. I guess people having some unrest. A, in yeah, the some USA unrest in the room. USA locker room. So personally, based off performances, I think we performed better than people than I expected. And I think a lot of other people expected in the football world. So, yes, I say keep him for now. I don't know. I, I guess keep him. I, in a footballing standpoint, I, uh, I would keep him. I still think he has some learning to do. Um, I kind of think he's a chump, but other than that, I'd say keep him. <laughs> well, and as you said, we will get to it, but um, it sounds like a large reason and a just one, I would say, is the recent comments that he's mm-hmm. made about some of his players. Um, is that? Do you think that – does that warrant him getting the ax or him maybe moving on or shifting it, or do you think this is – Something that's maybe a bit blown up out of, out of proportion. Uh, I don't think it. I don't think it like requires an axe, but he kind of just looks shady and like. Mm. I feel like the locker room is kind of like. I feel like he just created like a situation for no reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's tough if you do lose the trust of your players. It also depends what we're building for. If there's someone more available, I wouldn't be opposed to him getting the axe. I don't think it's necess- like. I don't think he's deserve it of getting axed but if we can bring in like top class manager that is known to find success and take players or teams on deep knockout runs like if we're building for 2026 it would be better to reconsider now if we can get a long-term guy in but i guess i could i could phrase this a bit more interestingly if these comments about Gio Reyna were never said would we even be having this discussion right now no would, would we no. unanimously be thinking that he at least deserves another year to with the team at the helm to see what improvements can be made? Mm-hmm. I would yeah. still say he's a greenie, but I wouldn't say he deserves mm-hmm. an axe after the World Cup. Yeah, and I mean, I guess to, to jump into all that, because I think we have sort of covered his performance. I know we did our ratings uh, a couple weeks ago, which was a lot of fun for him and the rest of the USA players. But yeah, I think I, like most other USA fans, are kind of in between a, hard, a rock and a hard place right now with him. Um Going into the World Cup, a thing I really liked, uh, all the reports coming out of the USA camp were that he has this team very matched and very gelled. Everybody's very close. It's a good unit. Guys like each other. They like to hang out with one another. They're just a close unit, and I think that has varying degrees of, you know, that matters some, some amounts more than others when it comes to actual success on the field. We've seen teams hate each other that have a lot of success. So, I don't know. For me, it's tough because he really had a a great World Cup, and USA really showed out and had a great World Cup. But then this all comes to the forefront, and I'm thinking, man, you know, the the bread and butter of this team was they were a gelled unit, and this kind of seems to have maybe thrown a bit of a wrench into all that when it comes to Reyna. Um, Yeah, and I think for context of what was said, this came from when he was in New York. He spoke at the HOW Institute for Society's Summit on Moral Leadership. And that's when he released. I bet he was by far the most interesting speaker at that fucking yeah. event. <laughs> and, <laughs> that place emptied out after he left. Sorry, society. keep going. Yeah. And like you said, not I mean, not to make an assumption an assumption, but you might be right. And like maybe he got ahead of himself in making comments of like, oh, I had a situation and this is what I did to resolve <laughs> like, that situation. What's the time you ran into uh, something difficult from a leader's yeah. standpoint? He's like, fucking Gio Reyna <laughs> yes. sucks. Oh, um and it like he, he made the comments of he was clearly not meeting expectations on and off the field. And I'm paraphrasing, but a lot of it was circling around was centered around how he demanded the, these requirements from that player to not send him home. Those requirements were met. And then from there, there was no issues. Uh, based off reports that I'd seen, it, it's implied that those comments were meant to be off the record, but I guess another person within that organization for this event had said, had given it a green light to be released publicly. And then once that's released, you put two and two together. Who's a star player that didn't play? Mm. Gio Reyna. Um, so yeah. And then from there, 
Which then Gio all but confirms in an Instagram post exactly. he himself puts up. And then based off and then off of that, we saw reports come out from the athletic um, from Paul Ten- uh, Tenario and Sam. I'm going to butcher his name, Stesco, but uh, they, s- they stated that Reina showed an alarming lack of effort in training. There's a lack of intensity during a scrimmage against Al Gahada SC. Um, it caused significant frustration <coughs> within the team. Reina was reportedly walking around in the scrimmage. And uh, DeAndre Edlin and Aaron Long, who are senior, more senior players, actually spoke with Reina before he apologized. So, um, and yeah, I believe the apology that Greg Berhalter expected from Reina was to be in depth and not just, I'm sorry, guys. Like, I want, he wanted something like some substance to it, to the apology. Yeah. That way it's not just like a, you know, brush your hands an off and thing. walk away. And I get that too, so, right? Like, that make, that also makes sense. Yeah. Exa- yeah. Exactly. And then in Gio's response, um, he did outline that he, he let his emotions get the best of him. He was told he wasn't going to get playing time. That really took him, it rubbed him the wrong way, which I think it's on him to kind of control his mo- emotions. Yes, he's young, but. Um, you still have to be a professional in that, in that instance. Uh, and, and then he reported that uh, the stories that were told about him from journalists were fluffed and fictionalized. So it's a matter of, like, I guess what point of view you have. He's going to obviously defend himself, but obviously there's the the, the diligence of journalists to, to get the story out there. So that's kind of like a rough overview of the situation itself. Right. Um, and, yeah, I think – I think there. I think both parties are at fault. I think we kind of talked about that off mic, and um, I think Greg Berhalter should have done better as a manager to kind of keep things tucked away. And then I think Gio should have done better as a player himself to kind of handle the fact that he wasn't going to be a star player, and he wasn't um, the one that that Greg was going to go for in this World Cup. Obviously, he's young. He's going to learn from that. He's going to grow from that, and hopefully, it's in a in a in a good place. So. It, absolutely jay were you gonna say something oh i was just gonna i don't know i i don't i'm not like mckenna said i don't like i I think both sides are at fault i think geos is more controllable and i feel like mm. uh burhalter like had more intent and i and i get like like the way you said the summit like a leadership sh- like summit he had to show leadership he, like he gave a gave a specific example but like I don't know if what Gio is saying is true and he's just like, I was told like this was never going to come out. Like we were going to keep this in house and then mm. he's just going to like, I don't know, flaunt himself at a leadership thing. So yeah. like, oh, this happened and this is how we handled it. Blah, 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 blah. Like, I don't know. I, I, it rubs me the wrong way. Cause like, we've all been pl- like, we've all been players. Like if your coach said that about you, you'd be like, dude, what, like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. Like, why would you say that? And from an honest standpoint, as someone who, you like you said, has played sports and has been a major shithead on those sports teams, both to my teammates and my coaches, but looking back in hindsight, you know, it's something I can see easily now. So when I was reading about this whole thing, I'm kind of trying to use whatever real life experience I have. I'm not on the fucking USA team. <laughs> I wasn't in Qatar for two and a half weeks. I don't get paid to play sports for a living. I understand that, but I look at it and I'm like, you know, from the athlete's standpoint, yeah, he, you know, you can totally own up to those things. And I don't think we should hold this over Reina's head for any extended period of time. I don't no. think he's had the easiest 2022. He's had a lot of health issues and they all sort of snowballed into a time when you don't want to have those, which is the World Cup. I think the advantage, I guess if somebody has an advantage over the other one in this situation, Reina is all but guaranteed two more World Cups. Something would have to go horribly wrong for him to not be on the USA team for the next two. And Berhalter's guaranteed none. You know, he's a bad result from El Salvador away from getting the ax. He's a bad result away from not having his position anymore. So I think he does need to be a bit... We need to hold Berhalter to a higher standard as always in terms of coaching because their jobs go like that. But, Mm -hmm. you know, we've seen plenty of players have issues with their national teams and get a full hero's welcome every time a tournament runs around depending on the form they're in so overall it was like i think if this is the worst thing to come out of the world cup for usa other than kind of a piss poor knockout performance against a really good team it's really not that bad and i think this is something that will people will move past really quickly if it's that means berhalter leaving then so be it but i mean when when i look at this it's just this this is a, a guy who's a phenomenal player who will be a USA stable for years to come, even if he's can be kind of a pain in the ass in training. It's you know yeah. he's a, a part of this. Yeah, there. I mean, it's tough not knowing everything. If I were to pick a side, I think Burhalter is more at fault than Gio Reyna because he has to understand that 
I mean, he's a U.S. men's national team manager. You can't speak that directly and that explicitly about some. If you're at some conference, I don't know how much you getting paid to be at this conference <laughs> or if it's voluntary, but like you have to know that someone's going to latch onto that story. And right. despite it being in the graces or behind closed doors and it's not going to be leaked or um, like stated to the press, like that's a juicy story. That was one of the biggest headlines at the world cup while the United States were still in the competition. So I think that he is more at fault here and he needs to, shoulder the blame whether he needs like maybe he owes geo an apology that he i don't know if anything was offered but geo yes you can say that he should have been should have elevated his levels in training um should be putting in more work i think but that's like that issue was dealt with like it was all dealt with like geo yeah sure we wanted to see more of him at the world cup people are still wondering why we didn't um but he's a young player if his training level, like if he's, he, the team literally demanded more of him. And I think that's, whether it's credit to Burhalter or just the young players and the attitude that they have, like the fact that our team culture, the United States team culture was able to address that. Gio was able to maturely make an apology to the team that had some depth to it and then move on from the issue and seek opportunities looking ahead. Like he said, he's excited to shift his focus to 2026. Like, that was dealt with, dealt with behind closed doors, and Burhalter has to know. Agree. Like you can, you can't just go say that. And hundred percent. And in, in his, uh, in his, in the comments he made, he stated that in Rain's in, comments or uh, in Greg Burhalter's yeah. comments, he stated that if they were to send this player home, there'd be a lot of controversy to begin with. So who like, and it's not going to be Jordan Morris. The, the headlines that, are going to be following if he gets sent home. That's so. a little bit like I on the functionality of the U.S. Men's National Team and how Burhalter's running this team. I would raise questions as to, sure, maybe he didn't show up and show out in uh, friendly leading up to the World Cup. Maybe he looked a little lazy. Maybe he wasn't chasing down balls. But you give high-quality players a little bit. Not saying that he deserves that because he's so young, but it is like it's an exhibition match. It's leading up to the World Cup. The players will demand more of him. Is that that you then go and explicitly tell the player you're not going to be a part of this World Cup team. You're not going to be getting a lot of time. Like, why I think does, it was before that, though. I think it was he was told before they reported for... But like, if you're bringing him to the World Cup, why do you need to tell him? Like, wh- why is he owed an explanation or telling him beforehand of, you're not going to be... Like, how is that going to make him want to go and then train hard at the World Cup if he already knows there's a very slim likelihood of him stepping on the pitch? Like, I don't think functionally that's the best way to go about matters. I, I'm actually curious about that because I'd, I'd want to know how Southgate deals with it because there's so much quality and so much depth. Like, is he telling players before that they're not going to get a lot of playing time or is it just like they show up, he has a starting 11, and then the fringe players just kind of get left out to dry? They it's don't like really anyone not named Harry Maguire, you're not guaranteed a spot. <laughs> Just to yeah. let you know. But you know what I mean? Like, What's up, Harry? How you doing, bro? <laughs> Good to see you. Is that a new shirt? I like that shirt. <laughs> anyway, if you're not Harry Maguire, you might be fucked. This if you're not named Harry, you're probably not playing. <laughs> yeah. But you know what I mean? I like, think, yeah, it's like just, how, how are managers supposed to kind of deal with, especially like the U.S., because it's only a it's a squad with depth, but not as in-depth as other right. squads, clearly. Like, Gio is a star player, one of these star players. So it's kind of a tricky situation to handle, and I guess – Maybe you have to do that slightly. Mm-hmm. Let them know ahe- ahead of time. Yeah, but I, I, there's no way Southgate was saying that to like Connor Cody and like James Madison. No, but he might have said it to Grealish or even Rashford. Yeah, but like, I mean, I don't know. Take take a young player in that England side. Like, I don't whether it's Mount or like if Mount had a lazy day in training and a lazy games leading up to like. You think Southgate would have been like, hey, like don't expect anything at this World Cup? No, I think like, this came in all before they reported for you. Like, I don't think they were. In pre, they weren't doing in this. They didn't have a friendly yet, and he was told beforehand that he's not going to be a, a key yeah, but part. Why? Why would you say that? I like, thought it was. Like, I thought it was during it. I thought he said you're going to get sent home. No, no, no. Like he was told that he like coming into this World Cup that his because he was his, lazy. His game that, time like, was going to be limited. It. Yeah, but why tell a player that? I don't t- tell a star player that at that like. That's why I question. But he is a star player. How well does Burhalter know how to ride well, that like, line what, what of like it, man management? To I, like, I, you're the manager. You don't owe these players explanations for everything. And if you're giving them explanations for everything, you immediately you lose that like. You'll power. start to foster that environment of like right. 
kind of like bitchiness for like last <laughs> yeah. sorry to be crass but like people being like well i didn't get an explanation as to why i didn't play and you make a, a really strong point and the thing i think about too is regardless of whenever this like don't you couldn't even call it a dust up whenever this slight disagreement over his effort happened you know it it seemed to end there genuinely they seemed to they had it sounds like there was a meeting in front of the team he got called out by a few of the other players who were saying dude your uh exertion level is not good enough right now injury or not and it sounds like it was kind of mostly squashed in the butt there so berhalter really had one job moving f- outside of the situation and that's to not let this story get out i yeah. i totally get being at a leadership conference, wanting to be captivating, wanting for people there to get something out of it and thinking this is a, a real life experience I had. That's a perfect, like on the nose example of probably the question he was asked, which was again, like what's the time where you had a difficult decision to make or some, something along those lines. But yeah. it seemed to be nipped in the butt after the team addressed <laughs> it. So at that point, mentioning it at all kind of unearths it. Mm-hmm. So that's where Burhalter's in a tougher spot, but it's like looking back, you know, this was never going to get out and get leaked if you yeah. hadn't said anything. It's a moment of ignorance, I guess. And it's it's the details of like threatening to send a player home. Like, you know how bad that would have looked if they sent Gio Reyna home? Oh like, yeah. Then yeah. he would have had to publicly make a statement. Like yeah. to threaten a player with that, who knows if it actually was that extreme? Like I guess we don't really know. But it's like that also like that whole dynamic of like is Burhalter power hungry to be like no, we got to get him out. Like I get like one player can kind of jeopardize the culture, but if he trusts his managerial styles and that culture that he's built, the team will offset that and raise their level and neither demand that or Reina falls behind. And then he's not a part of the team. And it sounded like like the team had it handled. Like like you were saying with the veteran players, like noticing and talking to him and being like, get your shit started. That was it. They nipped it in the butt and then it, well, he gave the apology, nipped in the butt. Like, by the coaches, they were like, you need to give an apology to your whole team. Yeah, That was done, and like you said, nipped in the butt. I think, regardless of it all, it's salvageable. Like, this team is salvageable. Oh, yeah. This situation is not going to blow over more than it should, I think. And I think Greg Berhalter is... He probably knows he made, he knows he made a mistake. Like, right. he's not an idiot. But, he just made a stupid... Mo- he just had a stupid moment. Yeah, I think he did. And I think... Whether to, I'm not basing his whole like management style on this one situation. Um, I mean, there's other things of like how the U.S. played leading up to the World Cup and then playing what I saw as a completely different style yeah. in the World Cup. Like, hey, man, how are we going to play? Like, if we're going to expect to go out guns a blazing at the World Cup, why didn't we play that way in CONCACAF group? Like, a qualification play. Mm. Why do we sit in? Or the friendlies boring? before. Like, yeah. I get you want to play it safe. You don't want to concede. But I think... I raise the inquiry of like, is he a right man looking towards 2026? Because who knows in two years time, what personality is going to have to manage. Look at the growth that U.S. men's national team has already seen, that exponential growth. So what happens when he has five star boys on his hands and then he has to like, like it's going to get ugly. I guess, the ex- I guess the real question is what are U.S.? What are the USA's ex, um, aspirations for the World Cup? Because we're yeah. still far behind from a I lot mean, of the rest right, of the world. From well, what I've been seeing, like we're going to have like big competitions too. I'm pretty sure we're trying to get included in the Copa America. Yeah, I saw so, that. I mean, <laughs> like, I mean, if we get dusted by like Colombia yeah. and stuff like that, like we're halter might not even make it to 2026. So I, there's, I, all, there's a lot to it's look a forward long to. Way away. I yeah. think we have to look at ourselves realistically and thinking that we are better than Greg Berhalter as a as a country with the players mm-hmm. we have is a little bit premature. And I guess that's my point. It's like we can't be so arrogant to be, oh, get him out, get a top manager in, let's let's get a, gr- a great manager with these players. But it's like, yeah, these players balled out, but when they yeah. faced the Netherlands, they got exposed pretty easily. So right. I think we need to, you know, again, lower our expectations a little bit and continue to improve upon the things that we're really good at and fix out and fix the things that we obviously – were um what's the word exposed on so yeah that's my point i think we're in a good place now let's keep it let's see how our other friendlies go other competitions go and i guess if this whole geo rain situation continu- continues to snowball then we should maybe have a separation of manager and yeah i mean the good thing country. is they get a break geo rain scored a belter like yeah. three days ago he scored mm-hmm. a little touch to himself volley um but as these players are like getting top class management, like mm-hmm. um, that Palace center back playing under Vieira, we have Pulisic. He's played under Tuchel now under Potter. Like 
they're seeing all these high class management styles. You have soon to be how Mc, maybe Mc, McKinney <laughs> at um, Juventus. Juventus um, with Allegri. Allegri is there. I mean, all these players are playing under these guys, so they're going to expect that like cut above management style, and it'll be interesting to see if Burr Halter can actually get there. <laughs>